Transitions allow us to go from one state to another. It's what we can use to establish the logical flow through the states in our state machine. Let's create some transitions. For that, we're gonna need two states. Each one of those states is an animation that we create in the animations list. Right now, we already have two timelines. Timeline one, where we have the square in the left position, and timeline two is where we have the rectangle in the right position. For the purposes of this video, we're gonna keep these animations super simple and only use a single animation key. Now let's go back to the state machine and drag on our second timeline. Right now we already have timeline one on there. So what we're gonna do is grab timeline two, click and drag it onto the graph. And now we can go ahead and create the transition. To create the new transition, we need to put our mouse over near timeline one. You can see this gray circle appears, letting us know that if we click and drag, we can create this line, which represents the transition. Now, we just need to drag it over to timeline two, and you can see that we have this little line here with the arrow in the middle, and that tells us the direction of the transition. Now that we have the transition established, what we would expect to have happen when we play the state machine is that the rectangle would start in the original position of timeline one, and then go to the new position established in timeline two. Let's play the state machine and see if it works. As you can see, what we expect to happen actually happens. It starts on the left and goes to the right. Now, let's make this state machine slightly more complex so that we have some problems arise that we can solve. What we're gonna do is create a two-way transition so that we can go from timeline one to timeline two and then from timeline two back to timeline one. Now you can see we have two different nodes here, one with an arrow pointing to the left that goes from two to one and one that goes from one to two. Now let's play the state machine and see what happens. It doesn't really look like anything happens. So let's go ahead and open up the console and this is gonna give us a better picture. What's happening is that we've established an infinite loop where we're jumping from timeline one to timeline two all the way until uh, we exceed the max iterations. Now the principal problem here is that we haven't actually told these transitions when to fire. So they just continue to fire until we actually stop the state machine. Now, if we want to actually customize these transitions, what we'll have to do is add in conditions and inputs, which we'll cover in later videos. But if we wanna customize them, all we need to do is select either one of the transitions that we want. So for example, we can select our first transition and you can see we have lots of different properties to customize. Some of the things that we can customize are things like the properties like duration, we can add conditions, events, and even interpolation on the transition. Again, we'll explore all of these properties in a later video. The last thing that we need to do is learn how to delete a transition. So all we need to do for that is to select a transition and hit the delete key, and you'll see that it goes away.